Microsoft released their second feature update for the SharePoint Server Subscription Edition, or SE, in March of 2023. Now, these updates, they usually just include rollups of all the cumulative updates and patches, but they also sometimes include new functionality or bigger changes. And what's interesting about this update is the first time that Microsoft has updated the version of the SharePoint framework that's installed in an on-premise SharePoint server deployment, the first time in seven years. Now, while that breaks their previous stance on updating the SharePoint framework for on-prem deployments, what I'll show you in this video is this update, it just might be too small to really care about. Hey, I'm Andrew, and if you're new here, please be sure to hit that subscribe and notification bell below the video to see when I publish new videos for web and cloud developers on topics like the SharePoint framework. And if you want the latest news and insights delivered straight to your inbox, join the 10,000 plus fellow web and cloud developers who subscribe to my newsletter. That's linked to in the description of the, of the video as well. Okay, let's get to it. Microsoft released the SharePoint framework, SPFX, in early 2017 and it followed up later that year with a feature pack for SharePoint Server 2016. Since then, the latest version of the SharePoint framework has always been available exclusively on SharePoint Online, but the version that's included in the on-premises deployments of the SharePoint Server, it was always stuck to a specific version when the SharePoint Server was, was released. That meant that the SharePoint Server 2016 with feature pack two, it's stuck on SharePoint framework version 1.1.0. SharePoint Server 2019, it's stuck on the SharePoint Framework 1.4.1. And SharePoint Server Subscription Edition, or SharePoint Server SE, that's been stuck on 1.4.1. Until today. Microsoft released the new 23H1 feature update in March 2023 for SharePoint Server Subscription Edition. That was the second such feature pack following 2022's H1 in September of 2022. Now, among the other things, as part of this release, they bumped the SharePoint Framework version for the first time in an on-premises deployment. The installed version of the SharePoint Framework was only bumped up to the SharePoint Framework version 1.5.1. That version was released just four months after the SharePoint Framework version 1.4.1 was released. That was back in 2018, roughly five years ago. The only changes we saw in the SharePoint Framework 1.5.1 release were very minor at least from my perspective. Like what? Well, I maintain this spreadsheet, every release and every feature, and it marks down what, I mark down what versions are in there, what the release was and everything. So if I scroll over here to the 1.4.1, we can see that I've got it listed as being released in February of 2015 um, and all the different updates that we had. And over here, if I kind of highlight over to 1.5.1, we can see where the things are different. And you can notice, Pretty much everything is the exact same here. The same version of Yeoman, the same version of Gulp, the same version of Node that's supported here. Um, if I scroll down, you'll see a couple little things that might be a little different, like dynamic data was added as in developer preview. Microsoft also gave us the ability in 1.5, which also includes in 1.5.1, is the ability to do the dev preview plus beta package. That's not really that big of a deal, I don't think in this case. Microsoft did add support for additional package managers, not just NPM, but we could use things like Yarn and PNPM, as you see here. And then they also updated TSLint. It was bumped from version 5.6 to 5.9.1. I've already discussed the TSLint versus ESLint debacle at great length. If you want to learn more about this, I'll link to a video up here and include a few links in the description below to other videos where I've discussed TSLint and ESLint for SharePoint Framework projects. So you might ask, what's the point of such a minor update? Well, I asked the exact same question when I learned that this was coming. And if you're going to upgrade the version of the SharePoint framework, why not make more of an impact? Well, apparently Microsoft wants to take small steps to validate their SharePoint framework upgrade process with these feature updates to show their commitment to upgrading the SharePoint framework for on-premises SharePoint server deployments, specifically just SharePoint server subscription edition, like really small steps. In their blog post that announced this feature, Bill Baer said, this is the first step on a long-term journey to continue investing in the SharePoint framework for SharePoint Server Subscription Edition. That's it. There isn't much more detail than that. So for now, I honestly don't see any reason why you should rush to get this feature update installed if your goal is just to upgrade your SharePoint framework version. 
For the, for the most part, there's nothing compelling that was added to the SharePoint framework in the four months between the release version of 1.4.1 and the version 1.5.1 in 2018. Now, will they hold to this commitment to upgrade the SharePoint framework in the future, uh, future updates? We'll see. With the current release cadence, apparently we should set our calendars to later this fall in 2023 when the next feature update is supposed to come out. What about SharePoint Server 2016 and 2019? Sorry, there's no change in the plans or stance for these versions. This update exclusively applies to SharePoint Server SE. I don't expect we're going to ever see updates to the SharePoint Server 2016 and 2019, at least with respect to the SharePoint framework. If you're stuck with an on-premises deployment, SharePoint Server SE is your only hope to get an updated version of the SharePoint framework. But like I said earlier, you're still working with a version that's nearly five years old. What do you think about this update? Do you see it as a positive move or are you more disappointed by how small of a bump it was? Let me know, drop a comment below and let me know. If you like this video, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribe by smashing that big red subscribe button below the video so you'll see when I publish more videos for web and cloud developers on Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Azure topics, including the SharePoint framework like this one. I'm Andrew Connell. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you next time.